So welcome everybody to the Enix Molding Simulation uh, Digital Thursday session powered by Moldex 3D. Um, together with Larry Ren from Moldex, um, we are giving this presentation today. Um, that's why it also is in English. Um, my name is Ruud van der Brand. I am the Enix Cat pre-sales consultant for more than eight years now. Uh, focused on the Enix Cat demonstrations, helping customers with their design questions and challenges, and also for the prospects, and also giving the coaching slash training sessions around the Benelux. And together with Larry Wren, he will introduce himself. Hello everyone, my name is Larry. I'm the regional manager for the Benelux area. Um, I'm very glad for uh, having this opportunity to present today the latest technology that we have in Modex. I have started as a support engineer, uh, mostly for the, the European market at the beginning. So I'm still involved in some uh, technical projects. So if you have any interest or any special inquiries, please uh, feel free to contact me after this session. So the agenda for today, we have just done a small introduction of ourselves. Um, we're going to talk about market trends, challenges, um, talk about the introduction to CAT embedded molding simulation. So how is the eDesign Sync module working and in an XCAT? And then we give also a live demonstration about these topics. Okay, so first let's take a look at the current situation in the market. Um, we have been talking about Industry 4.0 smart manufacturing for quite some time now. So we see that more and more companies are willing to transform their whole product life cycle to the digital world. They have created a digital chain of all the processes. So to achieve that, you need to help of a lot of uh, software. So already starting from the design or the manufacturing, you already have the option of having a lot of CAD or CAM software. And then in the middle, you have the analysis stage, which in which you need to have CAE software. So all this loop is getting more and more complete. It's no longer a question of why do we need this, but more on how we're going to do this. But now we are facing a new challenge is that uh, the global economy is changing, um, sometimes with the influence of, uh, of uh, many countries and sometimes because of this very strange situation that we have this year because of the virus. So companies are also thinking about to be more and more independent. That means you have to complete all these uh, uh, steps in-house with the suitable capabilities, with suitable people, and also suitable tools, so software. At the same time, we see that the designers, which are mostly controlled by, by the OEMs, uh, are also willing to take more and more responsibilities. So they want to control the quality of their final product. So they would like to learn more skills. Uh, they are also willing to uh, increase their position in the, in the company. So this is also becoming more and more important to have the analysis skill. Uh, as you know, by common sense, that the easiness of making design change will decrease along the way in the, within your project. So the more you are ahead, then you have less freedom to make any changes to your regional design. And at the same time, the cost will also increase uh, exponentially. So we would like to propose that the simulation should be applied as early as possible, even starting from the concept from the designers when they still have multiple choices, multiple options. In the past, they may have a, uh, they, they may need to, to decide between a few choices, but now with the simulation tool, they could probably run all of them and see what the, what's the difference between the results. But the, pro the question is, because these designers don't have uh, enough experience for the plastic processing, so it's better to provide them a suitable tool that can mimic the process than to let them make at least the first few uh, good judgments. At the same time, uh, the project that we receive are also getting more and more complex. Sometimes the geometry is so seen or the, the, the features are so extreme that we are not totally able to predict what could go wrong within our experience. And sometimes because it involves new type of plastic materials, so the whole topic is also getting more and more complex. Um, at the same time, the in the traditional situation, the, the CAD software, that's what the, the part designers have, 
but the simulation software license uh, within another department or within another company. So to borrow that from them will sometimes disturb their, their, their workflow and also sometimes we're just taking over too many uh, modules that we don't need in the design stage. So it would be very handy if the, the CAD operator, the index designer has access to a, a license of simulation with uh, simplified or reduced modules that you can use very easily. Yeah, we're then talking um, about an issue. I used this image in the past uh, some more times. Um, Siemens has some pilots that they, uh, that they use to explain in which part of the software we are working in. Together, uh, today we are talking about integrated simulation uh, and manufacturing part. The Moldex is not a Siemens product, but is working together with Siemens to provide an, an capability with Moldex that is called eDesign Sync that you can use directly from within NX. So that's why we are a little bit putting up this picture. Uh, Larry is going to talk a little bit more of what the capabilities of the eDesign Sync module uh, right now. Thank you, Ruth. So you can see from this picture that uh, inside the NX environment, you have the tree of the Moldex toolbar, starting from assigning the, the property of the part, if there was some insert, if there's a runner system for the feeding system, and if necessary, a mold base or cooling channels and so on. So we can assign all the attribute, mesh it with a suitable uh, uh, resolution, and then choose from our very rich material database that is equivalent to the one that we have in the standard version. So choose from more than 8,000 material that you can have. And then assigning some basic uh, process conditions, temperature, pressure, feeding time, etc., and so on. Uh, run the analysis and then check the result inside uh, the index environment. All these supporting the full power of your CPU, so it can run with multiple cores, increasing the calculation speed. And then uh, on the left is what we provide in the NX uh, integrated package. So the basic functions for, for the part designers, feeding, packing, cooling, warpage, uh, the support for fiber field materials, some uh, handy gadget like gate location advisor, flow lens, thickness indicator, sync marks prediction, or estimation of the cooling time, even without uh, designing the cooling system. And then in the standard version, we provide uh, even more like a DOE for the optimization, uh, connection with structural analysis, like an Nastron, we can explore our properties and then continue with the, the applying some loads or some thermal analysis, micro mechanics if necessary, and of course, supporting other various processes like compression molding, foaming, by injection, co injection, gas assisted injection, this kind of thing. So if we look to the demo that we're going to do uh, right now is first we're going to show uh, the default part of NX that we can start from there to the eDesign uh, sync module within NX, how to prepare your simulation. And after that, Larry is going to tell a little bit of the results that we're getting out of this uh, simulation. So if we're going to uh, NX, here is NX, so there. Then I have here, I have a normal part. It could be a step file that you have imported it in NX. It could also be your own default model part. Um, like you already have seen, I've created my own runner system. That's also one of the capabilities within NX that you have your own drafting tools to make maybe a complex runner system for yourself. So from here, we start in the navigator here at the side, uh, the, the model uh, sync module. Now, it's a step-based process, so at the top you will begin, double-click it. You get something to select your part. Have we select it, then we get to the material settings. If you use select material, you get the Moldex material database that's behind of this. So there are a few thousand materials already in there. If you're having your own created materials, you can send some samples to the Moldex lab and they can uh, provide you the files that you need to use them in the simulation. For now, we're going to use this kind of material. So we add this material, the part will be colored, so it, so you can recognize that it has a material inside of that. So now we're going to do this the same for the runner system. So we're going to use 
this solid that we have here. We can select if it's a cold run or a hot run system. Now, after that, we have to pinpoint where the melt front is. So the insuring point that's going to be there. If you want, you can select some kind of mold base. If I'm double clicking this, you can see that he is calculating based on the size already some kind of mold. You can assign a material at this moment. I'm not going to do that, but that could be maybe interesting to add in your simulation. You can insert a cooling system so you can draw with your normal sketch tools within NX lines that you can convert here to uh, cooling systems that you can maybe check also your cooling efficiency and that kind of stuff in your uh, simulation. Now, if you have prepared all of this, you're going to the mesh generator. And from here, I'm going to use the EDI sync and then we can say here how fine the mesh needs to be. So longer the calculation is going to be and preparation of the mesh. So I'm doing a rough one. So these are the steps in the beginning a little bit to start up uh, the first part of the process. Um, behind tools, you have also tools to maybe add a default gate that uh, models can provide runner systems, but also gate location advisor and that kinds of tools are there that you can use. So here is almost finished with creating the mesh. The mesh generated successfully. He's creating here a new one, so I tried it already a little bit. He's saving the file as so that you don't lose your settings that you have just have done. And from here we can go to new analysis. And then you are able. He has to start it up a little bit. I will come up with a pop up in a minute. To fill in all the settings that you need for your simulation. Take some time because we have to collect some stuff. There it is. So I can here set with mesh heading which mesh we will use. So it was mesh three. You can give it the name. So it is the first wrong is run is just checking if the filling is OK. We're doing also only a filling analysis at this moment. You can use also different types of things, but uh, in the first run, you first want to check if it's going to be completely filled or not. You can play a little bit with the temperatures and those kinds of stuff. You can go to advanced settings from here and then you can press OK to start the simulation. I will hit cancel because this will take some time. After the calculation, you can see the results also within NX, but Larry is going to show that how that is being done in Moldex 3D itself. So we're okay. going to switch in a minute from the screen. Larry is going to switch. OK, there Thank it you, is. Ruth. Yeah. So until now, we have been um, operating the, the the design and the assignment inside the next environment. So we have run some simulations and now we're going to take a look at the results. So as you can see from my screen, this is the interface of the standard version. Uh, all the functionalities that you see here are also provided in the next environment. It's just that we are using a different API. So this is uh, roughly the first design. So we have the runner design like this using a male mode design and uh, the feeding result will look like this. So you can easily play the feeding video. It's also provided inside the NX uh, version. And then by just stopping a few steps, before the end of the feeding, we can start to investigate our first potential issue. So here, not only you have the last part to be filled here uh, that creates a weakness, and that's also because you have some windows here. So all of these uh, would probably not be totally suitable for the final product. Uh, in addition to that, we can also display the air traps and well lines. So here you have accumulation of air trap and well line at the same time. 
and of course we have this window so the the connection of these things will also be weaker than the main body so we can think about how to optimize this situation as a part designer the easiest way is to change gate location so without touching the geometry yet so we could do a second attempt changing the concept from a male mode to a female mode. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, if you have already ordered the mode and you want to make this switch, then that will be very, very complicated. So it's better to do that in a, in a software. So respecting the same flow length, so I'm trying to put the gate roughly at the middle of this part, and we can observe the feeding pattern again. So we can see that this time, it doesn't finish in this corner. We will mostly push all the, the male front to this corner so that when you take a few steps back, then you see that here, at least you're not gathered into this corner. And here it's a larger surface. So, and the, the shape of the male front is also more suitable to create a more stronger uh, welding. So we can check again the air traps and weld lines. So at least the situation has improved in this corner. But some of you have already seen that we have created another potential issue, which is this corner. We have created an inner air trap that is roughly on the surface, which is more complicated for rea in reality to, to put the venting. So in that case, we're going to uh, maybe make a first attempt to change the location of this rib within the annex environment. And that's where the uh, the part designers start to 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 get involved into this uh, process. So we're going to show you with a video. Yeah, so you can make a design change and uh, that's easy because this is also in one package. Um, you go back to Linux. Here we can delete some faces of a rib. Like this is a step file, but if you design it for yourself, you have your features to go back to. Uh, I'm showing here some small way to change uh, this rib. So in the mean part, we are going to delete that area and use the region face selection of the delete face command. So we first selected one part face in the selected region and then all the boundaries, and then we can easily select all the faces between that. After that, we have to do recreate some uh, geometry because we get a lot of holes now so i'm using some splines that needs a g1 continuity because there was a tangent um, g1 continuity blends in here so I'm creating those splines back that i'm going to use after this in a, a fill surface so there are a few lines now we just need to create them all Going to the side here. One side left. And then after this last line, we are going to use the fill surface. You could do this in one action, but I think this is giving better control of every phase that we are going to recreate. So with the fill surface, you can select the edges. I have a default on G1 continuity, so the top edge here, I have to recreate that to G0 uh, because that's not able to make tension. Then I hide the curve of the first topic because I wanted to select as much as I can edges of surfaces. So I'm only using the, uh, the, the spline as a bridge and after that I'm hiding it to select there the edge instead of the spline again. So you really know that that surfaces are connected to each other, maybe with a distance tolerance or something, you get maybe a mismatch between the curves. So I'm doing this for every surface. You'll see that you have now a little bit better control about what's happening in every curve. On this side again, at the top edge needs to be converted to a G0 continuity. And then we go further with the last two surfaces. However, just the delete phase wasn't possible because this surface here was a little bit too complex. 
to recalculate. So this was the fastest way to get it off. Uh, if you have used it in your own part with the rip feature, you can recorrect uh, the sketches. You can go to delete phase again to delete some phase that we just created. Uh, so it's going to be one big surface there back again at that side. This one is too complex, so it won't work. I'm showing that also. And then the right side is just a plain face, so there it's also get rid of that face. You get less faces and sometimes also better. And on the cylindrical face, that part also. Then I had already created in the front a line for the new rib. And then with the rib feature, you, you can select the body and then the curve and you will automatically extend until the surface. And with a draft, a new rib. And after that, with the edge blend command and the setting feature intersection, you can easily select all the intersected edges of the feature that you just created to select them to create a blend. So this is a, a way to make a design change for the next model that Larry is going to show. We have done an extra rib in front of that to have a solution. Thank you, Ruth. So now uh, let's take a look at what the uh, result will look like. So here we have the first variation, design two. With a modified rib position. So here we're just using common sense. So the designer has no clue what could help, what could uh, be wrong, but he just tried to move this rib apart so that maybe he's expecting that the merging of the, the fitting pattern will be better. So we can also make a comparison with the previous run. So here on the right, I'm putting the new run, and on the left side, I'm putting the original run three with different rib design at the corner. And then we just let them flow at the same time. And see if we can capture any differences. And then when we take a closer look, we see that the air entrapment is still there, although a little bit shifted upwards, but it's still there. So uh, the next attempt for the party designer, he could imagine that, okay, instead of moving one ribs, how about I add one rib right at that hole so that it can push that air trap into the, the edge of that rib. So this is just also, also another uh, very quick and uh, uh, standard modification that you can do. And now when we observe the feeding pattern, we can see that the air entrapment has been really pushed to the rib so that you will end up uh, at this side, which will make it easier for the venting to be placed. So at least for the part designers within uh, roughly two designing change or maybe two gate location, he already know, he already knew and learned how to solve the first injection molding problem. Back to you, Rude. Yeah, so if you looked at the recap small of what we have done, uh, uh, you can use your original designs to um, send them to Moldex by using the eDesign sync module that there is capable in your CAD software. Uh, we have used now NX. Um, after that, uh, you can do the results, uh, finding out what's happening when you're filling a plastic part with uh, the molding injection simulation. And this is a little bit what we wanted to show today. Um, Larry, back to you. You have something about Moldex to tell. Uh, yes, exactly. Thank you. Um, at, actually, at the end of this month, September, we have three days of online uh, presentation from all the experts and users over the world from Moldex 3D. So you can check the de design. Uh, you can check the details by using your phone. Just uh, uh, put it on, on the, the QR code on the right and you can visit our website, including more information about this. 
So we would like to invite you to attend or register to this event. Uh, we have more than 30 different presentations, each one with a length of 30 minutes max. So you're free to choose which presentation you will be interested. So uh, I really welcome you to participate in this event. Thank you. So that left us to uh, um, thank you for your attention today. Um, you can view the session back in our recordings also on the website. You can check which next digital Thursdays there are planned and also see the recordings back of the, the old sessions that we have given the last year. Um, if there are any questions, you can ask them uh, in a minute and then we can answer them. If you have questions after the session, you always can contact me or one of my colleagues to ask the questions that you have about this session. So for the rest of that are that are not having questions, thank you for your attention today and I hope to see you next time.